Welcome to the duel of the two kings, BMW 7 Series versus Mercedes S-Class, top of luxury here with Thomas and Autogefühl in 4K full screen, full length. Let's go. Design-wise, here the new 7 Series, relatively high in the front, rather angular design, split headlamps and this huge double or even mono kidney. What do you think? Worth us the more? traditional design of the Mercedes S-Class. Even if you pick here the AMG line, you have the upright standing star on the hood here. A little bit lower, more classic sedan form. Yeah, that's already a huge difference in the front. We'll tell you all about the technology, driving ourselves and also being driven, the chauffeur driving experience, everything coming up now. Turning indicators, here with the BMW we have this pulse effect, like a heartbeat with the Mercedes, more classic, but also beautiful integration. I think both are quite attractive here in the front, aren't they? Here in the side profile, let's talk about length. <laughs> 5 minutes 39 for the BMW 7 Series or 212 inches. Now only available in the long wheelbase version. There is just this one version. And that means this new length is 10 centimeters or four inches longer than the Mercedes S-Class. Also then in the long wheelbase version, there's still a short wheelbase version available in Europe. However, technology advantage for the Mercedes S-Class, both offer rear axle steering, but the S-Class up to 10 degrees. The rear wheels turn into the opposite direction than the front wheels with BMW is maximum 3.5 degrees. And that makes the S-Class in parking in and out, basement, garage and so on, so much more agile. Visually, by the way, yes, we have AMG line versus the M Sport Pack, so very comparable. It's just that we have smaller wheels on the S-Class today, 19 inch in an aero design, 21 inch with the BMW 7 Series. In the rear, the design difference is very obvious once again. Contemporary with the 7 Series, but more angular design and then a more timeless classic sedan rear for the S-Class. Which one do you like better? Here, as for the rear lamps, actually more stretched here and slimmer with the BMW. Let's take a look at the turning indicators. Both have spectacular functions. With the 7 Series, it's more this pulse effect once again. And with the S-Class, we have these, you know, these three-dimensional vertical elements inside. Looks also really lovely, doesn't it? Air suspension, by the way, is equipped with both. Key comparison. I think both have something, right? Galvanization feels a little bit more premium than the BMW is a little bit slimmer, but you can also get this computer key at BMW. Both also offer soft close, but let's still compare the door closing hammering sound. Mm, really subtle with the 7 Series. And with the Mercedes here, the handles fold out and then let's listen. Also sounds good, but there I think the 7 Series sounds a little bit better. But here also than soft close possible. Seating position in the S-Class, although from the outside it looks lower, the seat itself is more plush. You sit kind of like on the seat, I would say. Steering wheel, you have a little bit more capacitive BS buttons here. In the BMW, it's a mix, I would say. And the animal skin alternative here in the S-Class is just one option with fabric. But overall, the seating comfort yeah, will be very interesting when I directly switch now to the 7 Series. Seating position in the BMW 7 Series, G70, new generation, really super comfortable. The seats give you enough side support. At the same time, they don't cage you in too much, so great compromise. And also this whole driving position, relatively low still, it gives you the feeling that this is still a driver's vehicle. Seating materials, by the way, there's also the so-called Veganza material available. It's a development of Sensatec. And in Germany, for all versions, in the UK, for the i7, in the US, only for the petrol engines. Strange decision, but they have this material on a lot of markets. And it's really, you know, just looks the same like this one here, and it's really great. Interior cockpit overview, super clean and high-class materials. The only thing that doesn't feel that good is here, you know, awesome at night with the ambient lighting. It's really amazing. But when you hit the turning indicators, also looks nice. But when you really deeply press it, that's not that cool. But that's kind of like the only flaw. Um, everything else, what you look, what you feel, it's really high class. Just then again, a lot of blinding by the light here, for example, on the left side, or maybe also here in the lower part with this crystalline lever stuff that looks cool but then is giving you some flashes. 
It's good that in the lower part we can still control the infotainment system with that one. Everything else and also wire touch and also the AC unit wire touch. That's what it is like with both vehicles. Steering wheel I prefer here with the 7 series because these buttons are kind of integrated as one but they still give you good haptic feedback and this then is for real for adjusting the speed. Instruments, modern and clear to read and you can also change the whole layout. Both vehicles come with a head-up display, here the more subtle one in the 7 series. Infotainment system in the BMW, horizontal layout. You can argue about the hardware layout and also about the software layout, but what you can't argue about is that the BMW system is more responsive, quicker and so far showed no errors or bugs at all. This is here the Apple CarPlay integration, Android Auto as well, but both only wireless here. Interior overview with the Mercedes, completely different layout indeed. It's a nice horizontal design element here. And then this screen is vertically attached, basically. More high gloss black piano like I use. They both have that, but Mercedes just a little bit more here. So the quality of the materials is to me a little bit lower than in the 7 series. With the digital instruments in the Mercedes, you can still get this classic analog look at least, or like this even more. So you're a little bit more flexible and also in the color schemes. And the head-up display available in two different trims, in the second one also with augmented reality. And oh, cool. It's always nice to see the star here, right? Mercedes has more fancy features. For example, when you switch the digital instrument view, also the infotainment system view changes. So yeah, then you can find your personal favorite style for your S-Class here. The AC unit is still integrated here also and well you can reach it better while driving so that's better accessible here than in the 7 series. The infotainment system overall is less responsive overall and has sometimes a little more failures here and there but the overview here is a little bit better so definitely pro and con. For example, you can also play with the colors of the ambient lighting. That's also really impressive here. Rear seating comfort here in the S-Class. You feel that the bench is a little bit stiffer actually from the material. So the 7 Series comfort in the rear to me a little bit better. However, what I found better here is easier setup, for example, to control the uh, different sun blinds just here with the window levers up and down and also for the sun blind behind me or something. It's just a press of a button and also to push the front seat forward here, just a press of a button and I don't have to go in the screen or something. This is just easier to me and while I let this one here unfold, let's compare when I'm driving here behind. I'm driving here in the seat, still a lot of legroom of course, just a little bit more than with the G70 BMW 7 series and when I can test here the executive driving position now it is fine for me but in the Audi A8L and in the BMW 7 series um, I can stretch my legs a little bit more you know it's fine um, but you feel there's some length difference it's luxurious enough definitely also here with this middle console there you can also control everything here in the screen if you like or use these internal screens, but they're also just an option. The Mercedes sunscreens, they are split in front and rear. And the difference then is that, well, you have this barrier there in the middle, but the front one you can actually open. Rear seating in the BMW, it's extremely comfortable in here, even with the base bench setup. So plush materials and so on, and good ergonomics underneath the seat. And you feel like you have this single seating, although you have the through bench, you just have more leg room here in the BMW 7 Series. And you can also go for this executive pack that you can hire the car rest. And you can also go for the optional screen here in the top part, the theater screen, not really necessary, I would say, rather use your own iPad or smartphone and so on. But you have more leg room also stretched out in this executive package. And overall, just more comfort here in the rear in the 7 Series, I feel. The basic controls, however, even here of the sun blinds, are all digital here in this screen. And that makes things more complicated, I feel. And when you put down the armrest, ah, this is not the nicest solution here for a luxury sedan. In the 7 Series, you get a fixed glass roof, but then you have no barrier on the middle. And talking about over-engineering, automatic doors are available. And then look at that here. This is to open it from the inside, just like the first 
push, then this would be the emergency failsafe manually opening. And this is the fully automatic opening and closing function. Pressing it here, tension, there we go. Trunk or boot comparison. There's a button here for the 7 Series and underneath here for the S-Class. Leader figure wise, 550, 540 for the pure combustion engine versions to compare kind of equal. Here the S-Class, one thing I do criticize is the sound of the closing and opening mechanism. Just doesn't sound S-Class like, that's maybe hardly C-Class or something, you know what I mean? But actually good space in the width. Here it's just a little bit higher because there's the hybrid battery underneath. So in the pure combustion engine mode, it would also be deeper. The length here is just a little bit shorter than with the BMW 7 Series. So here this is a meter or 40 inches and there the BMW is just a little bit longer. But then again, it's a little bit more narrow right here. So both overall comparable, just the closing sound. It's a little bit more premium here with the BMW, listen to that. And it's, I love it when they have gas struts. Cool shot, right? <laughs> so they have something in common and also something else is different. Well, they both have three liter six cylinders, petrol and diesel, then also eight cylinder petrol engines, 4.4 liter for the BMW, four liter for the Mercedes. Special to the S-Class is that in the Maybach version, they offer a V12 and the plug-in hybrid models each. Mercedes has the bigger battery in the PF. And then the 7 Series is available as i7. So the pure electric version of the 7 Series is basically the very same vehicle, whereas Mercedes goes with the EQS, which is a separate vehicle then. Welcome to Thomas's Comparison Driving Lounge, starting with the BMW 7 Series in the new generation. Ooh, sport mode. The gears are getting preloaded and let's go. Well, that was 70 to 120 kilometers an hour acceleration. Stopped by this Seat Ibiza. Let's go again. Ah, super smooth acceleration. Feels like nothing. 160. 180. And wow, it's so silent in here. The car remains so stable. Incredible. 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. It really feels like driving in a normal vehicle at 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. This is yeah, pure perfection on the German Autobahn here. Wow. I mean, it doesn't shake up at all. Really calm on the steering wheel at the same time. It has a good steering and natural steering input. Recently, one of the best steering inputs at BMW, I really have to say, um, you know, I always criticize the 3 Series steering input, which feels to me a little bit less natural. The BMW SUVs are also quite good, but here I really like it, you know. So it, it remains calm when you're driving really fast, but at the same time it has no dead zone area, really cool. And for this large luxury sedan, you still get a somewhat sporty feeling. And that is actually what BMW is about, that even if you buy this large luxury sedan, the focus is still driving yourself. You know that sometimes the case is that owners here are being chauffeured during the week and then they drive themselves on the weekend. Me personally, I think I would always drive it myself. <laughs> what about you? Tell me in the comments. Yeah, it's really something to enjoy. Suspension here is a little bit stiffer in the sport mode than standard air suspension, but still, it's on a very good comfort level, so really, really good compromise. The sophistication of the ride has even been increased in this generation. Lane change here. Feels really nice and sporty, super smooth, and putting in the turning indicators is so much fun. This feedback, you know, you hear this clicking sound, really good haptic feedback. I'm really glad to have that because we've seen it more and more stuff here is, yeah getting touch and everything. I don't like that also, especially to do that while driving. Yes, at least you have this middle controller to do something in the infotainment system without touch by the climate unit. I tend to control the climate unit while driving. Not sure what about you. Some leave it on 22 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Fahrenheit and automatic and that's it, but others do change it actually. Wow. You always have 
good power also from the engine here. A pure six cylinder today. We have the diesel today, but this comparison test here is not about comparing the engine versions. It's more about the overall overall vehicle and the driving feeling. And here, yeah, really, have to say the core essence of the BMW is it is still a driver's car, although it is this luxury sedan. What about when we change the motorways? That's always a very interesting part. Here we go. Sport mode, yeah, there you feel the weight of the large luxury sedan now. So, especially when you're a little bit faster in these corners, you can't deny that it's not a sports car, you know? But for this segment, that's what I'm saying, it still feels pretty sporty. At low speeds, by the way, the rear exit steering, if you have that package, plays a large role parking in and out. You really need that when you have a tight parking spot or basement garage or something that massively reduces the turning circle. That's pretty cool. And also feels more agile at lower speeds then. And here, when you're accelerating out again, super smooth. Of course, as a rear axle dominated platform, that means always when I have all wheel drive, it's still the rear wheel bias, gets out of the corner very well. Wow, so nice, so smooth. Let's compare the normal driving mode, how that feels on a motorway here. Let's see it pers called personal. No suspension set on the normal softer tone. And I'm really looking forward how it is in the comparison to the Mercedes S-Class, if this will be a significant difference then, especially suspension-wise. So when we think about the previous generation and several series versus S-Class, the S-Class was always more let's say softer node, the steering a little bit more, you know, calm and so on. Definitely more the calmness, comfort focus, where I still hear the sporty focus with the 7 Series remains. But is it still the same today? Let's find out. Now driving the Mercedes S-Class and here, look at that. This is a U-turn. It's incredible. The rear axis steering here acts even stronger than in the BMW 7 Series, both of course in good vehicles, but here just more degree angle. Wow, this is awesome. And this U-turn there is hardly doable with some compact vehicles. You know, there you have to just take an outside circle, uh, you know, take part of the next street from that. Wow, this is just wow and makes this huge vehicle just so much more maneuverable inside a city, basement, garage, in and out and so on. Then let's take it here to the sport mode and German Autobahn. Let's go. 70. 120. Ah, nice. 160. And 180, wow, it's really nice. This is here the 3 liter 6 cylinder combustion engine. In this case, I'm paired with the plug-in hybrid model, but the battery is at the moment empty, so I can better compare pure combustion engine to combustion engine. But this is not the main focus here about the engine conversion. It's more about how the car is feeling, actually. And yeah, the thing is here, if you compare it to the previous generation, also here, this car, this S-Class generation, feels sport here and main thing about this is the steering input here no dead zone area and in this sport mode also the air suspension gives me a little bit more feedback and also the steering and throttle input changes that's very interesting indeed so yeah, before in that previous generation there was more gap of this like this sportiness gap between mercedes and bmw here a little bit less definitely but clearly you still feel that the air suspension at Mercedes, and I think for an air suspension decision is actually quite good, it feels more floaty, you know what I mean? Especially when you go back here um, you know, to the to normal comfort mode, for example, in this case then it's called hybrid. So in the normal driving modes then, or comfort mode, you just feel like the car is going like this, like this, in, this in these waves and Usually when I buy an air suspension, I also want to have that feeling. With BMW, it's not bad at all. I'm not saying that. It just feels a little bit sportier. And I think that's, you know, why not? Doing this different setup then from brand to brand. With Mercedes, it's then different when you go for an AMG model, 
where then even if you have the air suspension would never expect that it's actually an air suspension because it's so stiffly tuned so it's really like this you have the mercedes model then you have the bmw model you have the bmw performance models and then the AMG models by Mercedes when you're talking about the suspension stiffness, you know. So Mercedes always has this huge gap between the normal models and the AMG model. Overall, feeling really good at home, planted also here on the German Autobahn. As for the noise insulation, I mean, they're both really good. Somehow I have the feeling that the S-Class does a little bit better. The question is always also where in which area and so on. Here we have this new technology that they apply this dampening foam already to the raw chassis. They introduced it with this generation of the S-Class and that is also helping a lot actually. Really, really good. The Both vehicles, like size-wise, um, don't feel too much apart. Funny thing is here with the S-Class, when you just take a seat and then compare it to the new generation of the C-Class or also now to the E-Class, you feel like you would be sitting in the same vehicle three times, like C-Class, E-Class, S-Class. They are really much alike on the interior. How different it feels rather comes obvious, or rather becomes obvious than when you drive it, because here when you have the larger, longer S-Class, you just feel like you would be steering this boat around in comparison to these smaller models, you know. But indeed, I feel that the Mercedes models from size to size nowadays come way closer than the BMW models feel step by step. We have to see when we soon drive also the all new BMW 5 series, also has the i5, recognized pose. Oh, is that like gesture control? interesting no i don't want that that's the thing about these new vehicles something is always happening <laughs> randomly so we'll soon also compare the 5 series and 7 series of course and then we'll see if that that's still the case well, well what i said now but definitely very interesting here lane changes there you feel the floatiness of the suspension definitely a little bit more yeah, maybe you already see that on camera you know and that would not happen in the comfort mode of the bmw so Yes, what I was suspecting, that there is still more this sporty emphasis in the BMW and here more this comfort floatiness emphasis in the S-Class. It is still the case, but not that much. So here in the S-Class generation, they made it a little bit sportier. Another difference is also with the BMW, we had 21-inch wheels. Here we have today 19-inch wheels. This is also making a huge difference. So if you want more comfort or more sportiness. That always also depends on the wheel choice, so you should watch out for that and pick the wheel size then according to your liking, what you appreciate more, the comfort or the sporty side. Now it's getting really interesting. Let's see here, switching motorways. Of course you feel the weight of the vehicle, but the rear axis steering is evening that out a little bit. Interesting. So. Hmm, that was actually quite good. So, the peculiar thing here is that the S-Class from the suspension setup doesn't suggest that it's so sporty, but when you then speed it up a little bit more and push it into the corners, it feels astonishingly light. So, you really have to differentiate here, you know? So, the BMW is suggesting more sportiness and is also sporty, but uh, somehow I also felt that when you push it into the corners, you feel the weight a little bit more. And here, the S-Class doesn't have the sportier suspension setup, but when you push it into the corners, it's sportier than you think. So that's also something interesting. Whoa, yeah, good acceleration out here, of course. And the same thing applies to the S-Class. When you have an overdrive model, you always still have a rear wheel bias because of this base setup of the vehicle. So now I keep my hands on steam, but I'm not steering. The car is doing that for me. There we go, automatic lane change complete. I wonder about you, what do you think? Is that really a useful feature or would you just rather do that yourself? That's what I said. <laughs> Oh.
wow, the S-Class really feels lighter than it actually is. And of course, we also have a being chauffeured comparison, starting here with the 7 Series. And interesting is that when you have these turns at slow speeds, you feel the rear axle steering even more when you're sitting in the rear. That's very fancy, right? Get this middle console and some cup holders. We can also put the smartphone here, for example. And this is a little bit of a weird solution here, right? Um, yeah. However, it's really comfortable here in the rear. It feels also somewhat sporty because you are somewhat like caged in, like a single seating. But I think what is a very interesting solution is they have a lot of comfort here on the outside seats, but they still keep the through bench. You can always, of course, have that, but this is here no compromise. Sometimes you have sedans which are really basic as for the through bench, and then only when you get the executive seating, then you have a lot of comfort. But here, it's already in the base rear bench setup that you have good comfort in the rear. The only thing that is not built in this vehicle here is this, you know, this executive function that you can lift the calf rest here. So that is not built in this vehicle, but yeah, I can also live without that. If I push the seat here forward, you already have a lot of space in front of you. That's actually pretty fancy. So yeah, already in this setup, you can really enjoy. And yeah, when she's hitting the throttle, <laughs> you can feel that it has, it has a lot of power. It's really nice. So the, the interesting thing to me is that this somewhat still sporty character of the vehicle, you can still feel that somewhat in the rear. Of course, you might argue if that's the right approach also for this kind of vehicle, but to me, it is always, I like to drive the vehicle myself. I could still enjoy it right here. And some might say, hey, you want to feel some sportiness, and some say you might not want to feel that. So this will be a very interesting aspect, how it will compare in the S-Class. Mercedes S-Class, first plus point here, these automatic seat belt reaches for the rear seats. Oh, also here I feel the rear axle steering really strong in the rear. The thing is that the S-Class has actually a higher degree where the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction in, on, the rear, on the rear axle. So you can feel that even stronger than, for example, in a U-turn and so on. What I really like is a separate cushion here with microfiber. That's, that's really lovely. Um, what both, car, both cars, of course, have is here this automatic control for the, for the side shade. The 7 Series rear um, windows were, you know, overall like darker tinted already. However, and I can also control this um, this upper shade here. Um, yeah, it's it's really funny to do that. Here in the S class, the panoramic roof is split, so in the front you can actually open it. In the Seven Series, you cannot open the whole thing to leave fresh air in, but it goes all the way through. And that is the difference here when sitting in the rear. So, for rear passengers. The solution of the 7 series is actually better because you have a clear view to the sky that's somehow cool and here you have like this, this middle barrier where you look at so for rear passengers better with the 7 series with the roof in the front of course it might be cool when you have you know possibility to really open that that glass roof overall it's also fairly comfortable here um yeah head area here this of course really cool with this extra cushion but you know how the how the legs lay on here, so the seats are a little bit stiffer from the material, I feel. So um, I also felt a little bit more caged in with the 7 Series from, you know, like this, how the seat is formed. Um, so the normal seating impression is a little bit better with the 7 Series. Here, the difference is that we also have this executive package. I can also put my feet then here on the front. I can also activate it here while driving. That's that's pretty cool actually. Showed that to you earlier on the interior part that the seat goes all the way forward and then this calf rest comes out. So that's of course a really fancy feature. It takes a while and if you ask yourself, does that block the view then for the chauffeur? Yes, it always does. So that's a 
that's a that's a big problem um yeah but i think manufacturers just say like hey you know it's more important how the rear passenger feels and yeah it's a nice function but um i really like that function in the 7 series as well where you had this you know like, like this full support then also you know here on these the legs right here that was pretty cool and yeah, it's not really very well comparable now since this one has to pack, the other one doesn't. But what I can say from testing both, you know, with an earlier 7 Series vehicle is that the length of the interior here for the rear passenger, it's really longer in the 7 Series. And when I'm here, 189 or 6 for 2, I mean, I can stretch here more or less, but I can more stretch in the 7 series and that might also be something what is plus here for the s class is that i feel that the insulation in the rear is a little bit better here with the s class so it feels a little bit more silent and from the sportiness of the driving indeed yes here we also have 19 inch wheels mount at the moment with the 7 series we had 21 inch, 21 inch the thing is really with the s class you feel from the setup it feels a little bit more chauffeur-ish like better noise insulation and you don't feel so much sportiness i would say so i would say i had more fun driving in the 7 series and here for the chauffeur function hmm this one feels more like being chauffeured you know what i mean however then again suspension wise I feel that although we have smaller wheels here, the suspension of the 7 Series was sportier, but not really less comfortable. So overall, both some pros and cons when being chauffeured. Hmm, yeah, big question now is which one would I take to drive myself? Which one would I take when I'm being chauffeured? Let's find out. Now it is time to decide which one would you choose? And which one would I keep home with me now? The thing is on the exterior, the 7 Series more the screaming out design, especially the mono or double kidney in the front is splitting opinions. And that's what they wanted to achieve. They want people to talk about BMW design. They have indeed achieved that. But the more timeless design is definitely with the S-Class, more traditional and more this classic luxury sedan style. Definitely on the exterior, matter of preference. Also has to do that the 7 Series builds on the same platform than the i7 electric that you can put the batteries in the floor. Then on the interior, that's very interesting. The quality of the materials is better with the BMW and also especially the seating comfort, both in the ergonomics and also in the seating materials. BMW offers more animal-free choices where the S-Class availability of the animal-free choice is very, very limited. So overall, the interior is better done by BMW in this case, and especially in this generation. Driving-wise, a bit of a surprise indeed. So on the one hand, in driving, the S-Class is a little bit softer from the suspension setup. So that kind of clears the, you know, we expecting, yeah, the BMW drives sportier than the Mercedes and the Mercedes is more comfortable. Yes, suspension-wise, softer, a little bit stiffer, sportier. But then suddenly in the corners, the S-Class kind of, you know, was more agile than the 7 Series. That was very surprising. So in driving, the S-Class really accelerated, literally, uh, and, and was really surprising me on the sporty side. So this generation of the S-Class is, although it doesn't suggest this in, a, in looks, is sportier now also in driving and therefore comes closer to the 7 Series in this setup. But both drive exceptionally well indeed. The winner in today's episode, well, taking also maybe pricing into account, of course you can configure these cars, you know, to the moon basically. But just as an example, as they are here now today, 136,000 for the 7 Series, 190,000 euros for the Mercedes S-Class, Yes, if you then put comparable engine versions and spec this one a little bit higher, you can, of course, even that gap a little bit. So we always have to take that one into account. But pricing is maybe also not the most crucial thing about this one. To me, the crucial thing here today is indeed not the exterior. That's a matter of preference. But the interior seating comfort, especially from the ergonomics, is so just better with the BMW. And therefore, I feel more comfortable both driving and also sitting in the rear. That's why it would be the choice here with BMW today.